A fire extinguisher is a handheld active fire protection device usually filled with a dry or wet chemical used to extinguish or control small fires, often in emergencies. The first fire extinguisher of which there is any record was patented in England in 1723 by Ambrose Godfrey, a celebrated chemist at that time. It consisted of a cask of fire extinguishing liquid containing a pewter chamber of gunpowder. This was connected with a system of fuses which were ignited, exploding the gunpowder and scattering the solution. This device was probably used to a limited extent, as Bradley's weekly messenger for November 7, 1729, refers to its efficiency in stopping a fire in London. A portable pressurized fire extinguisher, the Extinctor, was invented by British Captain George William Manby and demonstrated in 1816 to the Commissioners for the Affairs of Barracks. It consisted of a copper vessel of three gallons of pearl ash, potassium carbonate, solution contained within compressed air. When operated it expelled liquid onto the fire. Thomas J. Martin, an American inventor, was awarded a patent for an improvement in the fire extinguishers on March 26, 1872. The soda acid extinguisher was first patented in 1866 by Francois Carlier of France, which mixed a solution of water and sodium bicarbonate with tartaric acid, producing the propellant CO2 gas. A soda acid extinguisher was patented in the U.S. in 1880 by Almond M. Granger. His extinguisher used the reaction between sodium bicarbonate solution and sulfuric acid to expel pressurized water onto a fire. A vial of concentrated sulfuric acid was suspended in the cylinder. Depending on the type of extinguisher, the vial of acid could be broken in one of two ways. One used a plunger to break the acid vial, while the second released a lead stopple that held the vial closed. Once the acid was mixed with the bicarbonate solution, carbon dioxide gas was expelled and thereby pressurized the water. The pressurized water was forced from the canister through a nozzle or short length of hose. The cartridge-operated extinguisher was invented by Reed and Campbell of England in 1881, which used water or water-based solutions. They later invented a carbon tetrachloride model called the Petrolex, which was marketed toward automotive use. The chemical foam extinguisher was invented in 1904 by Alexander Loran in Russia, based on his previous invention of firefighting foam. Loran first used it to extinguish a pan of burning naphtha. It worked and looked similar to the soda acid type, but the inner parts were slightly different. The main tank contained a solution of sodium bicarbonate in water, whilst the inner container, somewhat larger than the equivalent in a soda acid unit, contained a solution of aluminium sulfate. When the solutions were mixed, usually by inverting the unit, the two liquids reacted to create a frothy foam and carbon dioxide gas. The gas expelled the foam in the form of a jet. The foam was a combination of the products of the chemical reactions, sodium and aluminium salt gels inflated by the carbon dioxide. The foam was discharged directly from the unit, with no need for an aspirating branch pipe. Special versions were made for rough service and vehicle mounting, known as apparatus of fire department types. Key features were a screw-down stopper that kept the liquids from mixing until it was manually opened, carrying straps, a longer hose, and a shut-off nozzle. Fire department types were often private label versions of major brands, sold by apparatus manufacturers to match their vehicles. Examples are Perche, Ward La France, Mac, Seagrave, etc. These types are some of the most collectible extinguishers as they cross into both the apparatus restoration and fire extinguisher areas of interest. In 1910, the Pyrene Manufacturing Company of Delaware filed a patent for using carbon tetrachloride, CTC, or carbon tetrachloride, to extinguish fires. The liquid vaporized and extinguished the flames by inhibiting the chemical chain reaction of the combustion process. In 1911, they patented a small, portable extinguisher that used the chemical. This consisted of a brass or chrome container with an integrated hand pump, which was used to expel a jet of liquid towards the fire. Another type of carbon tetrachloride extinguisher was the fire grenade. This consisted of a glass sphere filled with CTC, that was intended to be hurled at the base of a fire. Carbon tetrachloride was suitable for liquid and electrical fires and the extinguishers were fitted to motor vehicles. Carbon tetrachloride extinguishers were withdrawn in the 1950s because of the chemical's toxicity, exposure to high concentrations damages the nervous system and internal organs. Additionally, when used on a fire, the heat can convert CTC to phosgene gas, formerly used as a chemical weapon. The carbon dioxide CO2, extinguisher was invented by the Walter Kitta Company in 1924 in response to Bell Telephone's request for an electrically non-conductive chemical for extinguishing the previously difficult to extinguish fires in telephone switchboards. CO2 is still popular today as it is an ozone-friendly clean agent and is used heavily in film and television production to extinguish burning stuntmen. Carbon dioxide extinguishes fire mainly by displacing oxygen. 
It was once thought that it worked by cooling, although this effect on most fires is negligible. An anecdotal report of a carbon dioxide fire extinguisher was published in Scientific American in 1887 which describes the case of a basement fire at a Louisville, Kentucky pharmacy which melted a lead pipe charge with CO2 intended for a soda fountain which immediately extinguished the flames thus saving the building. Also in 1887, carbonic acid gas was described as a fire extinguisher for engine chemical fires at sea and ashore. In 1928, Dugas came out with a cartridge-operated dry chemical extinguisher. It used sodium bicarbonate specially treated with chemicals to render it free-flowing and moisture-resistant. It consisted of a copper cylinder with an internal CO2 cartridge. The operator turned a wheel valve on top to puncture the cartridge and squeezed a lever on the valve at the end of the hose to discharge the chemical. This was the first agent available for large-scale three-dimensional liquid and pressurized gas fires, but remained largely a specialty type until the 1950s, when small dry chemical units were marketed for home use. ABC Dry Chemical came over from Europe in the 1950s, with Super K being invented in the early 1960s and Purple K being developed by the US Navy in the late 1960s. Manually applied dry agents such as graphite for Class D, metal, fires had existed since World War II. But it was not until 1949 that Ansel introduced a pressurized extinguisher using an external CO2 cartridge to discharge the agent. Met LX, sodium chloride, was the first extinguisher developed in the US, with graphite, copper, and several other types being developed later. In the 1940s, Germany invented the liquid chlorobromomethane for use in aircraft. It was more effective and slightly less toxic than carbon tetrachloride and was used until 1969. Methyl bromide was discovered as an extinguishing agent in the 1920s and was used extensively in Europe. It is a low-pressure gas that works by inhibiting the chain reaction of the fire and is the most toxic of the vaporizing liquids, used until the 1960s. The vapor and combustion byproducts of all vaporizing liquids were highly toxic and could cause death in confined spaces. In the 1970s, Halon 1211 came over to the United States from Europe where it had been used since the late 1940s or early 1950s. Halon 1301 had been developed by DuPont and the U.S. Army in 1954. Both 1211 and 1301 work by inhibiting the chain reaction of the fire, and in the case of Halon 1211, cooling Class A fuels as well. Halon is still in use today but is falling out of favor for many uses due to its environmental impact. Europe and Australia have severely restricted its use, since the Montreal Protocol of 1987. Less severe restrictions have been implemented in the United States, the Middle East, and Asia. Most countries in the world require regular fire extinguisher maintenance by a competent person to operate safely and effectively, as part of fire safety legislation. Lack of maintenance can lead to an extinguisher not discharging when required, or rupturing when pressurized. Deaths have occurred, even in recent times, from corroded extinguishers exploding. In the United States, state and local fire codes, as well as those established by federal agencies such as the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, are generally consistent with standards established by the NFPA. They commonly require, for fire extinguishers in all buildings other than single-family dwellings, inspections every 30 days to ensure the unit is pressurized and unobstructed, done by an employee of the facility, and an annual inspection and service by a qualified technician. Some jurisdictions require more frequent service. The servicer places a tag on the extinguisher to indicate the type of service performed, annual inspection, recharge, new fire extinguisher. Hydrostatic pressure testing for all types of extinguishers is also required, generally every 5 years for water and CO2 models up to every 12 years for dry chemical models. Recently the NFPA and ICC voted to allow for the elimination of the 30-day inspection requirement so long as the fire extinguisher is monitored electronically. According to NFPA, the system must provide record-keeping in the form of an electronic event log at the control panel. The system must also constantly monitor an extinguisher's physical presence, internal pressure and whether an obstruction exists that could prevent ready access. In the event that any of the above conditions are found, the system must send an alert to officials so they can immediately rectify the situation.